in today's world we see that there is a kind of a race in order to be the best in order to acquire the best of things and all of us want to use our potential to the fullest but though this is good developing ourselves making use of our talents to the full potential at the same time what matters is the means that we take in order to achieve these goals now we see that in today's world two things have creeped in which somehow tend to distort the final result first and foremost we have this whole individualism that begins to creep in because in the bid to develop in the bid to use our talents we see that we try to be secretive we try to hide things from others and therefore we are only concerned about ourselves and those completely near us as a result we fail to help those who are in need if they are outside our circle on the other hand we see that there is a lot of fake news going on in today's world in the bid to gain popularity or in order to popularize some issue we see that news and most importantly truth tends to get distorted and therefore we see that what tends to get propagated is division and hatred now today's readings in a particular manner will focus on these two issues of individualism and on false prophecy or false prophets and as we read today's gospel passage we have the parable of the good samaritan now why did jesus give this parable of the good samaritan and how can we relate it to our times today well let's find that out during today's episode of tea time with the word but before we can begin our reflection let us take a look at the readings for monday in the 27th week in ordinary time today's first reading is from the letter to the galatians chapter 1 verses 6 to 12 and the gospel is from the gospel of luke chapter 10 verses 25 to 37 and we see that today's readings will deal with this whole concept of loving god and loving neighbor and how we can sort of club them and make one commandment in today's first reading we see that Paul is trying to warn the people of Galatia. Now, he has been preaching the good news to them, but at the same time there were false prophets who were trying to distort the truth. And even in those times, there were many people who were getting deceived by the false prophets. And therefore Paul is very clear and very assertive in today's first reading. because he repeats it twice he says that even if one of us or even if some angel comes and tells you something that is contrary to what is the gospel you are not to believe it because we see that sometimes in today's world also because the news tends to be flashy or because it is interesting we somehow tend to get easily carried away with it we see that there's a lot of false news that is being circulated on various social media platforms and therefore sometimes if we are not careful enough we could be misled because once we are misled then we see that it becomes difficult in order to really search for the truth it is only when somebody comes and enlightens us it is only then that we realize the truth and therefore St Paul is warning the people of Galatia beware of the false prophets beware of those who distort the truth distorting the truth has become quite common in today's world because each one tries to distort the truth in his or her own way in order to gain a benefit out of it and therefore in this individualistic world 
we see such tactics are gaining more prominence. But it is up to each and every one of us to become alert and aware. And thus, if we know the truth, we will not be misled by these false prophets. Today's gospel passage is very interesting because today's gospel passage will try to club the two commandments of love of God and love of neighbor together. Now the context of today's gospel is that there is a man who comes to Jesus and asks him what must he do to inherit eternal life. And if you analyze the question well, you see that in the question itself, there is a problem. Now, first and foremost, you may say, yes, the man wanted to test Jesus. And during those days, the scribes and the Pharisees were trying to trap Jesus, were trying to see if Jesus says something which could be used against him. And therefore, this question is asked in a way to trap Jesus. But there is a flaw in the question. Now, the man asks, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And here, the man considers eternal life as something which he can sort of gain on his own merit. Now, when you look at the term inheritance, inheritance is something that you get because of being part of it. And therefore, when we speak about eternal life, it is by virtue of being sons and daughters of God that we gain access to the kingdom. But according to the people of that time, especially for the scribes and the Pharisees, according to their thinking, the kingdom or eternal life was something which could be gained. And therefore, they were so rigid with the law because for them it was, if we follow the law, God has to give us the grace. And therefore, this was what formed their rigid mentality. But therefore, Jesus tries to tell the man that inheritance is something that is you can't acquire by your actions, but it is something that is given to you by God. And then we see that Jesus asks him, what do the law say? And the man, knowing the law very well, tells. You are to love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, soul, mind, and also your neighbor. And then Jesus tells him, okay, that's correct. Go and practice it. And here we see that the man somehow is not satisfied because he hasn't succeeded in his attempt to test Jesus. And therefore he asks Jesus, who is my neighbor? And Jesus here gives the parable of the Good Samaritan. Something that we can also relate to the world today. When we see people in need, there are hardly a few who would stop and help. But the others we see would proceed further, completely ignoring them as if they did not exist. Some of them out of fear of the law, out of fear of various other factors, would hesitate from helping them. And therefore we see that another trend that we see now is people would rather take pictures and post on social media rather than helping. And all this what happens in today's world doesn't somehow contribute towards that brotherhood and sisterhood that we all imagine. And therefore in today's parable there are three people who meet a person who has been attacked by robbers. The first is the priest, the second is the Levite. And both of these people, they go by that side and they walk on the other side of the road. They hesitate to help. On the other hand, there is a Samaritan. He sees the man, feels pity on him and helps him. He takes him to the inn and he tells the innkeeper, do whatever is needed. If something more has to be done, I will pay you on my journey back. And this shows the care and concern that the Samaritan had for that person who was wounded, who was attacked by robbers. Now the Samaritan did not know him, but it was humanity 
that caused him to do such a thing. And therefore we see that humanity is such a wonderful concept that it is beyond boundaries, it is beyond religion, it is beyond various other factors that tend to discriminate us. Because we see that these discriminatory factors are something that is created by man. It is not there in the original plan of God. And therefore we, by emphasizing these factors of caste, creed, religion, color, etc., we tend to divide ourselves. And here we see that when it comes to love, love has no religion, love has no creed, love has no color. For love, everything is equal. And that is why when it comes to showing care and concern for others, every person who is in need should be our neighbor. And that is why we see that in the end, the man leaves with an answer that probably would have made him question about the way he goes about doing things. And this is exactly the purpose of the parable because Jesus would take practical instances in order to tell the people what is really valuable. And therefore, as we reflect on today's readings, let us pray for this grace that we may be able to respect the other, that we may be able to find God in them. And thus, by reaching out to others, we may ultimately give praise and glory to God. And we also pray for the grace that we may be able to love one another together as brothers and sisters, as sons and daughters of the Lord. And thus together we may help Christ in building the kingdom of God by propagating the gospel values and most importantly radiating his peace, joy and love to the world around us. Amen.